Hi there, Toy here, and I thought I'd talk about some TV today. So, I am so far sticking with my goal of trying to do at least one video a month. Um, I've already done an update to my reading challenge in the month of February, so I thought I'd talk about some TV before the month ends because it's getting close to the end. I've been doing a lot of reading. I've actually been doing some writing. I'm really excited. Maybe I'll talk about that later. I've also been doing a little bit of TV watching. I don't watch a whole lot of TV, so most of what I watch is either on Netflix. Some of it's on Amazon Prime, YouTube. Um, we do have the, um, I can't remember what that app is called, but we have a couple of different apps that we watch stuff on. Oh, one thing that I did watch was the Saint movie. It was a made-for-TV movie, I believe, from 2017. And it stars Elijah Dushku and Adam Rayner. He looks familiar. I can't think of anything that he's been in off the top of my head. If I do think of something, I'll include it in the video once I've edited it. <laughs> edited it. Once I, yeah, okay. Anyway, so uh, Elijah Dushku, most people know her. Um, she got her big break in the film True Lies, I believe, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But that's not what most people know her from. They know her from the um, cult TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She was one of the slayers. And then later on, I think she went to do a show called The Dollhouse. And she's been in a bunch of different movies. I believe she was in the first Bring It On film before they went into like Bring It On like seven. You know, so she's a pretty, you know, well grown you know, actress. So um, I thought that the Saint TV movie was entertaining. Not the best thing I've ever seen. Not the worst. I once tried to watch, I don't know if it was, I think it was a TV show. Might have been a mini series for The Transporter and it was just awful. So... I thought this was really well put together. You know, with The Saint, it, you know, it's a story that's been around for a while. It's been done in comic books, series, things like that. So it they could do something else with this if it had, you know, a big enough following. I don't really know. I didn't look into it that much. But it was not a waste of my time. So, yeah. Something else that I watched that I really kind of got into, I went on this binge of like watching short films. And um, I can't remember the collection, but I watched a collection of Disney short films and most of them were shorts that I had seen. Um, if you watch Disney films in the theater at all, you notice a lot of times they have little shorts that come beforehand. So some of them were for those, you know, that, that I had seen before. Some of them were ones that I had never seen before because I don't think they had been aired, in, you know, before a movie that I'm aware of. And then... There were a few that I just skipped because I wasn't interested in them. But because I watched that, it prompted me to check out some other short animated films. And they were absolutely delightful. I watched something called The House of Small Cubes. And I literally think it's like 12 minutes long. There are no words to it. It's just the visual and the music and the story that it's telling. And it's kind of a, a sad story, but it kind of leaves you feeling hopeful. And it's just, if you have 12 minutes of your life, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> House of Small Cubes tells the story of this man who loses his favorite pipe. And because of where and when he's living, houses are stacked up kind of like in cubes. And so he has to dive down to old cubes to try to discover his pipe and along the way he has um, some memories and so you can see how that might be sad and a bit nostalgic another one that I watched after seeing that was called golden time and it was a little bit longer I think it was 21 minutes again there's no talking in it there's music and there's the visual of the story being told and this was the story of a um, an 80s old tube television kind of being dropped off at the junkyard and it's like not accepting the fact that it's obsolete and old and unwanted and it's constantly trying to escape the junkyard while other discarded items in the junkyard are trying to befriend it and the story kind of has a twist at the end to where you're left wondering you know does the tv get what he wants is he happy is he sad is this just the way of life you know it's it was the i thought it was a really good story 
And again, if you've got 21 minutes of your life, it's definitely worth checking out. Next thing that I watched was a um, short independent film, a comedy called Unleashed. And this, I seriously was like at home sick one day bored and I watched it expecting it to be really horrible. I don't know if you ever get in a mood where you just want to watch something bad. I know that sounds weird. Like there's bad movies that make you angry that they're so bad and there's bad movies where you're like, okay, that was a good way for me to waste my time. If I don't remember what happened in it, no big deal, you know, but you kind of want something on in the background that could maybe, you know, gather your attention. So that's what I thought the Unleashed movie was going to be, but it was surprisingly well done. It was really cute. And like, it was, um, it was, you could tell it was a, a very low budget film, but it didn't look low quality for what it was conveying. So basically you have this character named Emma, who's an app maker and she is betrayed in, by her boyfriend in several ways. And so she makes this big move to a new city, bringing along her pet cat and her dog. And she just feels kind of hopeless and alone. And she thinks that she'll never find someone. And it's really one of those wish upon a star kind of things. Like, I think she says something. I don't remember exactly how it happened. And then lo and behold, her cat and her dog turn into two, like, perfectly available men. And this is where I expected things to go completely off the rails. Like, I was ready at any moment to, like, just turn it off because... With the way things are in, in you know entertainment these days, they really could have taken this and just gotten all crazy and raunchy with it. And they totally didn't do that, which is why I thought the movie was so cute. I mean, you have a guy who is playing the part of, of a personified cat, and he's a, totally a cat. Like, he's not trying to hit on this woman. He just wants to get back <laughs> to his uh to his cat toys and his cat tower. And the same thing with the guy. Like he's totally not trying to be this sleazy guy. He's a dog. All he wants to do is chase the ball and please this girl. And it's a really cute story. Like I was amazed at how cute it was. So if you have the time and are willing to look past the fact that it doesn't have incredible graphics and big name stars and it. it's a cute story. Uh let's see, it stars Justin Chatwin, Kate Micucci, and Steve Howey. Now, Kate is the comedian. I've seen her in a lot of different things. I know her. The guys, they both look really familiar to me, but I can't think of what else they've been in off the top of my head. If I come up with something, I'll include it in the video when I edit it. So that Unleashed was worth seeing. The next thing that I saw, oh yeah, me and my husband watched this together. And it, we actually started it in January, but I guess by the when I made my last video, I hadn't started it. But regardless, it's a it's supposed to be an eight part mini series, but the only thing that was loaded on Netflix was I think four parts of it so far. So I'm assuming there's going to be a season two. And anyway, it was a documentary series called The Toys That Made Us, and it's basically giving you the behind the scenes backstories of these incredible toy enterprises that were really successful <laughs> even though the stories behind them are quite ridiculous so i think this particular series talks about the star wars franchise the he-man franchise the um gi joe franchise and barbie so yeah those were the four episodes that were loaded at the time of me shooting this video so and it was really great really eye-opening some of it i could totally see but there were other things that i was just like are you kidding me like that that really happened that's that's <laughs> it's so if you if you're any at all like nostalgic about your childhood toys the way i am i would say totally check it out it was worth seeing and then one other thing that I watched recently, another bit of animation, because I was, you know, I'm going to roll people, is something called Revolting Rhymes. Now that's, there's a book, Revolting Rhymes, written by Roald Dahl, and I guess this animated series or mini series was based off that book, and I was a little bit confused about it. It's listed on Netflix as an exclusive, but I believe it had originally aired on PBS in America, but I, I totally completely missed it. And I believe even then it had originally aired on a BBC channel. I don't really know. Regardless, it's basically these fairy tales that are kind of twisted 
Um, but still, you know, I mean, they're fairy tales. So I thought it was really, the, the animation was really cute. The stories were a little gory, but fun. It's not something I would recommend to my students. Uh, I work with special needs children. Many of them are on the spectrum. They tend to take things very literally. I don't see them being able to watch that and not be a little disturbed by it. But if you have uh, maybe a more mature child who <laughs> doesn't take everything so literally and likes to be scared a little bit, I would say Revolting Rhymes is great. Um, yeah, so these are some of the things that I've been watching on Netflix. And like I said, I hope to get to some other stuff that I've been trying to watch. And um, tell me, have you seen any of this stuff? Did you like it? Are you willing to try it? Is there something I should check out? Let me know. And that's all I have for now. Bye-bye.